Hello and welcome to my video on how to configure your Dell SonicWall to allow for better communications or any communications with the PlayStation 4. Um, different people have experienced different things. Uh, when I first set up the PlayStation 4 here at our house, first thing I noticed is it worked, but it would take very long on downloads or downloads would get interrupted and they would get canceled and have to restart over and eventually it just stopped out entirely. There was, there's all these issues. And then it occurred to me, you know, they might be using certain ports, things like that, that I obviously don't have open because SonicWall doesn't, by default, will have everything closed. So um, I researched it and they use an awful lot of ports. This was one of the more tedious things I've had to do. Uh, this is, of course, avoidable for most people who have simple routers provided to them by Charter, Time Warner, etc., or by people who buy their router at uh, Best Buy, places like that, because those all support what's called UPnP. Um, I've explained what this is in other videos, um, but it's basically plug and play for networking. Uh, Sonic Walls do not support this because that would be dangerous in a corporate environment. So, to allow your PlayStation 4 to work properly, you're going to first go to Firewall, and then Service Objects and then custom services. Now up here at the top is groups. I d did uh, create these into two groups for simplicity, um, but first you need to create all of the individual service objects. So that's from here, or let me do it this way. All of these ones that I've checked here. Now that is, and I'll put this in the comments section as well, uh, ports 80, T uh, TCP ports 80, 443, 465, 983, the range of 47, 3478 to 3480, 3658, 5223, the range of 6000 to 7000, 9293, the range of 10070 to 10080, 80, oh, now we're into UDP. It's the same list of ports all over again, but now for UDP. I don't believe they honestly use all of these all the time, but those are the ones that Sony officially says to leave open, so that's what we're doing. I then created two groups. Oh, let me first show you how to configure a single one. You're going to create a new uh, service object by clicking Add, and then name it, select the protocol, TCP or UDP, and then enter the port. For a single port, you enter 443 on both sides. For a range, you would enter 10070 to 10080. Um, and then for UDP, you, you're going to do all that, and you're going to do it all over again, this time selecting UDP. Um, good idea to name them pretty specific, so later on you know what that service object is for. You then click Add Group name your group. I named it PS4 TCP and then PS4 UDP and find all of your PS4 things and select all the TCP ones, move them over and click OK. I've already created these groups though as you can see. And once you've done that for TCP and UDP you're done creating service objects. You're now going to go to your access rules in firewall and now you have, um, it, depending on if your uh, your fire your PS4 is plugged in or wireless, you're gonna want WAN to LAN. Uh, oh, yeah, no, I actually have this on WAN to wireless LAN. That's right. I moved my PS4 to wireless, not by choice. <laughs> so you're gonna create two new firewall rules if you're. PlayStation 4 is on Wi-Fi, you want to make sure it's from WAN to WLAN. And you're going to add a TCP rule and a UDP rule. You could just create one group with all of them and then um, put them all in one group and create one rule. I did it this way specifically because I did not believe... I wanted to test if it would be, you know, still work without the UDPs open. Um, I don't do much streaming and things like that on PS4, so I don't, I didn't anticipate needing those ports open, but in the end I decided to keep them. So you do WAN is the from, 
WLAN as the two. Um, you could, in this case, I have my PS4 on its own guest network, but um, I've been kind of switching it back and forth, seeing which one's better, so overall, there. Source port is any. The service is the TCP uh, services, so anything coming in on those services will be allowed. And the destination, I, you're going to then select an address, address object, and you can create a new address object. Um, and I assigned my PS4 static IP so that I didn't want to open all of these ports on um, on just for everyone. So if you, you should assign your an IP address to your PS4, and I'll show you how to do that. And then make sure you just select the destination as your PS4. Um, schedule always on, users all, etc and then you hit OK and then the UDP is exactly the same only with the PS4 UDP service. Now under network you are going to go down to your DHCP server and you're going to get the MAC address of your PlayStation 4. Um, you can I believe find this on the bottom of it. I know you can find it in the network settings on it, as well as you can locate it just with a you know, uh, IP scanner or something like that. And you're going to add a static one. Um, I don't know which one is my PS4. I believe it's... I don't remember. <laughs> I've got several on here, but you would then basically just um, name it, which I should have done. PS4. Static IP address. And then you're going to put in the Ethernet address of it. Um, I'm not going to do it right now, for real. And then um, put in your default gateway. and you can comment if you want. And once you've added that, you now have a static IP address for it. And that is what you would enter when you select destination, you would create a new network, which I will show you mine here. PS4 So you have, oh, there you go. That's my PS4 IP address. And you would name it, put in the IP address you chose, make sure you select host as a type and WLAN as the type if you are wireless. You would be doing this on LAN if you're wired. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Once those access rules are in place, you'll notice the downloads are more consistent with what your Wi-Fi should normally be able to do, and uh, you don't get large downloads canceling after four hours and then having to restart it all over. All right, thank you very much.